एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू द डेड हॉर्स पॉडकास्ट फॉर दिस वीक विद मी इज विवेक हे गाइस एंड राशि हाय एंड टुडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वर्ल्ड बिल्डिंग इन गेम्स इन जनरल एंड लाइक व्हाट व्हाट थिंग्स वी लाइक इन टर्म्स ऑफ वर्ल्ड बिल्डिंग स्पेसिफिक एग्जांपल्स इफ वी हैव देम एंड सो ऑन सो विवेक व्हाई डोंट यू स्टार्ट आई डोंट नो द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट आई थिंक मैटर्स अ लॉट इज द कैमरा जनरली फर्स्ट पर्सन कैमरा इज like on a technical this are, are a lot better for pulling people into a world because you feel like you you're looking at it there's no there's no disconnect you're not looking at a character walking around the world you're seeing through the eyes of the player or the player character uh so i don't know like this last week i was playing amnesia a machine for pigs and that i don't know the amnesia games are games that do atmosphere really well and i find that they do it uh, they do it mainly through two things they do it through sound because they scare the crap out of people suddenly uh like you hear footsteps behind you and you shouldn't uh and they do it with lighting because the amnesia games are very very dimly lit so you can't see around you clearly and you always need a lantern and uh they they play a lot of cool tricks with uh, with your vision where you suddenly think you saw something move and turn around is the thing that you uh, generally imagine when you're walking around in a dark corridor you'll see something move at the corner of your I and you turn immediately to look and you won't find anything. Yeah, I find that it's terrifying. Uh, I don't know if I'm, either of you have played the Amnesia games or, uh, no. but I think like I, I think horror games in general are really good at like if they're good horror games, they're very good at pulling people into the world. I guess yeah. Outlast would be a good example of this as well, but yeah, I yeah, haven't yeah. I haven't played the game so. Yeah, Outlast. Uh, Outlast is pretty excellent in the sense that like I mean. their big conceit is you have to film everything right you have to yeah. to get footage and so right, you got right. night vision on and uh, it's even scarier because you can't see without the night vision it's pitch black uh, without uh, the night vision so, and it's yeah. kind of difficult to distinguish between what is moving and i mean i don't know yeah. night vision is yeah, kind of weird that way you 100% yeah. need that camera just to be able to look around and see what's going on i don't know like uh, do, do either of you guys uh, have have you played uh, like games which are side scrollers or third person games in which you know you instantly got into the world or like is there a is there a gap in time you find with uh, different camera angles that people use well I to be that- honest i played i I've, i've played skyrim and I, that's the only example i can think of you know so you can play as in both third person as well as first person and i preferred the first person in it so yeah even though it yeah, was think- fun looking at the characters but but <laughs> but <laughs> uh Uh, yeah, I prefer first person in Skyrim. Yeah, I think Skyrim pretty much is designed around first person. Like it's not as optimized for third person as a game I can suppose. be. I suppose. I just I mean, use I the third say, person to. Yeah. I just use the third person to stare at the at whenever it starts absorbing the dragon soul. So yeah, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was actually thinking of uh, like a. a couple of examples which are not rpgs because i always ramble on about rpgs on this show so prince of persia and assassin's creed like even though the plot of those games is not like stellar or even rather good most of the time but still the world building in that is pretty excellent like you just have to tell me that okay you are parkour guy and you are in persia slash ancient india slash whatever and i'm sold i'm at that point i'm like yeah. yes take my money so, with the hood <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They should just make a modern version of those games called Parkour Guy in in modern India. <laughs> uh, well, you yeah. get to play as Desmond in uh, Assassin's Creed series, so <laughs> does that count? I mean, Desmond is like. But no, it doesn't. That's the worst. Those are the worst segments of those games. Yeah. Desmond. <laughs> Desmond is like my god. Like it, you can't. Tr- you cannot try and make a more bland protagonist than Desmond. Like I can challenge anyone think, in the world. I think Connor was Connor is a strong contender, <laughs> but <laughs> let's not yeah. hate on Assassin's Creed <laughs> because <laughs> we've already done that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but, like, uh, and but, I even find the world building of XCOM to be uh, very good because XCOM immediately establishes uh, this the setting and what rules you play by, because that's the yeah. the key part. Like. which even like games like what i was saying like prince of persia and such don't so if i tell you that okay you are in ancient persia you still right. don't know what rules you are playing by right 
Right. But if I find XCOM to be a great example of world building because the setting, the the first uh, few bits of the setting themselves tell you uh, what the game is all about, uh, which is not the case if you consider something like Prince of Persia. Like I don't know what Prince of Persia might might the rules of Prince of Persia might are not clear just by the name. But in XCOM, you're like okay, aliens attack. We are an organization built by these uh, separate nations, and immediately you're like right. So I need to keep all of them happy. I need to train soldiers. I need to research. I need to build weapons and so on. So I think XCOM is a great example for this. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so too. And like I think uh, XCOM adds always keeps adding to the tension because you keep looking at that world map and you keep looking at uh, you know how how uh, in fact like how much of uh, each continent or each member of the XCOM project has been taken over. By aliens and like it ramps up tension yeah. gradually as the game goes on. Yeah. And when countries leave, that causes problems, and you yeah. lose funding. And uh, like yeah, like I think it adds on. It it doesn't have the minutia and the tediousness of bureaucracy, but it certainly like makes you understand that that is happening behind the scene. Yeah, there are exactly. Because yeah, uh, it uses a hard bureaucratic organization. There is a lot of internal politics going on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it uses are already like everyone knows that politics is. dirty business right so everyone yeah. is already thinking yeah man politicians look at their unreasonable demands i'll have to like you know make all of them happy i'll have to do this yeah and the best part is that like they insert that into the game by putting in these un missions wherein if there are threats uh, in other places you suddenly have to drop everything and go do this compulsory un mission okay you know Yeah. There's no choice. You have to go do this UN mission and save someone important because I mean technically you can refuse but then the country's reputation takes a, like your reputation with yeah. that country takes a hit. Takes a big I mean, hit. It's not compulsory. Yeah. But yeah, it's not compulsory but it is like it they set the they set the base for that kind of stuff happening in the background really well. Yeah. I I I particularly like that like that one line which the guy says uh, thank you commander we will be watching it's yeah. it's reassuring and sinister and yeah yeah at the same time scary at the same time it's it's mm-hmm. it's one of the best lines i think like yeah and the guy also looks like hitman so that makes it even more scary <laughs> yeah it does i think if they, uh, they another another actually another strategy game that really pulls you into the world and does it really well is crusader kings 2 uh Yeah. If they like when they made a Game of Thrones strategy game, all they needed to do was basically ask the Crusader Kings two guys to mod their game and make it Game of Thrones. I think someone has done already, that. Now. Yeah, already somebody has done that. Someone yeah. has done that. It is amazing. Uh, Crusader like, Kings thing, is like Game of Thrones but better because it's the real oh, world and you yes. are like, oh yes, you know, there's yeah, the Indian think, version coming, right? Uh, yeah, the Indian version, yeah, Rajas of India, yeah. is, is coming soon. Yeah. I think you play uh, Sikhs, Jains, and Hindus. Yeah. Those are the kind of kings you could play in that uh like the part i love best is that if you go to war in crusader kings you can't just go to war against whomever you want you have to have a reason to go to war yeah and uh, you send your your you send your chief minister to other other countries and you have to manufacture a fake reason to go to war with them <laughs> and based on how strong your case is people will support you or decide to rally against you yeah uh, that's pretty cool you can like you know you can set up these massive uh, plots against people in your family so for example yeah. if you have a like this is insane if you have a wife in crusader kings and she's not given you children yet you have to you cannot divorce her randomly you cannot divorce her randomly because the pope will not give you a divorce if you're catholic and i think almost everyone in that game is catholic but just by default uh, so or not everyone most people are So if you if you want to get rid of your wife, you have to start a plot to murder her. Wow! It it is insane the detail into which you can go in that game. Like it has a very it portrays accurately the way those people thought back then. Yeah, I'm and not I mean, saying murder yeah, your wife. And, she doesn't and, give you children. Yeah, and at the same time, uh, your wife can also plot against you. Yeah, 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 totally. Your minute, your children are plotting against like, you. Your wife. Yeah, is your children can start you, plotting, against you. plotting against you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have to be alert so that uh, and have people looking out and we, like trying to find yeah. out those plots because some of them might succeed sometime like occasionally you, you might not even realize that someone's plotting against you suddenly a pop up message will come and say uh, you were going to dinner and a taster died you know someone who oh. was tasting your food died and then you realize that oh shit someone's poisoning Somebody, my food yeah 
yeah and sometimes <laughs> you can die like you can die with po- poisoning or whatever and then you take control of the next air yeah so, and then suddenly you take control of the next air you fight oh my god this was the person who killed my previous person but now i have to revenge. play as as this guy yeah 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 now you got to yeah. play as the asshole I mean, it's not really <laughs> revenge because you are playing as the person now, so you cannot have revenge against yourself. Well, technically, you can. You can make really bad moves. <laughs> yeah, but that, that kind of uh, like you know, it's kind of like uh, a sort of meta game as opposed to like uh, inside the game, right? So it's it's yeah, kind yeah. of weird. Like at least I think because like I would consider like the job of the player as such to be like whatever. a uh, hand i'm dealt with i do well with that so yeah for sure for sure so i mean i would be like yeah good job you succeeded in that but now i have to play as you so the grudges are for later <laughs> and on top of like they they have this really cool thing where each character has traits so someone can be uh, deceitful or they can be thrifty or you know like they they each have pros and cons and they have several they have like six or seven this, this makes me uh, realize that the a uh, system in unrest is also similar to <laughs> say the kings too yeah have you have you plugged unrest is that was that the advertisement for this week's cast <laughs> <laughs> no that, that that's only one fourth of the advertisements there's three more unrest brought to you by <laughs> arvin the other from pyrodactyl inc games pyrodactyl game yeah yeah pyrodactyl games private limited actually oh oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I like. I agree. I think. Uh, I think. Unrest is similar to. I haven't played Unrest. That's no, it's not really similar. Yeah, it's just like the traits thing. The the the, the traits thing is similar. Otherwise, character has okay. Yeah. Okay. So Rashi, what about you? What What do you find pulls you into a game? You know, a game world it makes you believe that this, like, makes you forget that you're playing a game sometimes. um i guess it's the plot of the game that needs to be very important it's pretty important for me yeah so what are some of your like what are some of the better plots or what are some of the, your favorite stories in games then mm well i guess again i'm i guess red dead redemption was good and mm. yeah i mean assassin's creed 2 was pretty good Assassin's mm-hmm. Creed 2, like the the setting was nice, like this, like I was blown away when I was like running on the streets of Florence. But the actual plot was kind of uh, whatever, man. Like Assassin's Creed 2 ends with you end with you fist fighting the Pope inside Vatican City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that... still like actually I didn't like that part because but yeah, like I'm kind of getting sidetracked. But yeah, Rashi, please continue. Yeah, I'm trying to think of more games that. Really pulled me in, so I'm not coming uh, up with one. You mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Revengeance. Like, do you find that the setting for that? Uh, not really. I mean, the story. I didn't really like the story of Revengeance that much. Maybe it's because it's connected to the previous games that I haven't played. Okay. It's just fun yeah. slicing people up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> Revengeance is is uh, definitely not. Uh, a game which can pull you into its world because a to an extent it requires a decent knowledge of the metal gear mythology true and true. Uh, like it is it is a very esoteric plot you are the guy who's gone to a country to stabilize it but then yeah. the president dies in your first day on the job ha huh. and that, and some guy takes like your arm off <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's that's relatively simple for a hideo kojima written game like you know like I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For for a Hideo Kojima game, like the characters are very surface level. There, there's there not a lot of depth to what's going on. True. 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 Uh, but the ending monologue by that senator is amazing. Uh, I haven't seen that part. <laughs> no, no. He's already talked now about America and why he's doing this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 He gives a long speech. Ha ha. So uh, another, yeah, like, another game actually. Uh, mm-hmm. Which I yeah go ahead. Actually. So interesting, yeah, Prashi. What I noticed is that both the games you mentioned are open world games. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you find that you generally tend to prefer like, or you generally get more immersed in game worlds when you can go anywhere, or like is exploration a big part of immersing immer- immersion in a game world for you? 
Um, not uh, I, I don't mind exploring, but I just hate it when people give you side quests. I don't do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if somebody comes up to me and is like, "Hey, can you help me?" I'm like, "Nope, <laughs> go away." <laughs> so, main story yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah, main story mostly. But okay. Red Dead Red Redemption was one game which made me do side quests. I mean, I was really interested in the side quests for that game. They implemented it really well, right? You you're riding and you buy and you see something happening. True, true. Uh, which is why, like, it feels as if you have a choice. You don't have to stop this from happening. Yeah, yeah. You can if you want to. Uh, yeah. Another game actually uh, like related to this Red Dead Redemption is uh, which I find was did a pretty funny world building was Bully. Like yes, that, yes. Yeah, How Bully. How did I not mention Bully? Yes, Bully has fantastic world building. Have One thing I really like about it is that like uh, the open world is smaller. So I mean, Ro- yeah. Rockstar what Rockstar usually like tends to do is like make this big city with in which there will be like twenty thirty points of interest. And the other 500 kilometers are mostly empty, not really okay. very. So, but instead, bully, what it does is like almost all of the parts are sort of like interested and in, uh, interesting and related to. And at some point of time, you uh, visit each of them in detail. Yeah, it so, is small, but like the because it's small, you fall in love with that world. You know every part of it. Yeah, and it mm. it's bully is basically you play a kid who's going to school. Yeah, uh, in a boarding school. and uh, it is think of like all of rockstar's open world games it's those games but in a school setting hmm. so like no hardcore violence there's no murdering and stuff like that it's just the mean kids that you meet uh, are now like the gangsters that you'd see in in those games are mean right. kids in school who bully the other kids right and right. there are gangs uh, and so the gangs are jocks nerds greasers stuff like that you know Uh-huh. They they divide uh, they divide people into like their requisite kind of stereotypes and everybody all those stereotypes are different factions inside the school and uh, yeah they do a great job of setting up a world like you have to go to classes or you can bunk classes and then people will come after you for bunking uh, yeah they they do a good job of like pulling you into that world it's it's a good it's also a pretty good story. Uh, I would also uh, mention Witcher 2 in this. I can I guess Witcher 2 was pretty immersive that way. Yeah. I enjoyed playing that game. I enjoyed exploring the areas around and I enjoyed fighting the monsters and everything. Okay. It was a pretty good game. Yeah, and for me actually it was kind of the uh, like not as much as for for the Witcher, uh, which is which surprised me as well. Yeah, I find I found Witcher 1 very very nice, but Witcher 2 didn't didn't do it for me. Okay. Yeah. But like I again, I you have any idea why is that or just uh, I think one of the reasons or... is that it sort of takes too long to get going and and the first area doesn't provide any um, like there's there's tons of side quests like uh it's it's that thing where there are tons of side quests and there is the main quest but you sort of feel that you might be missing out if you don't do all of those side quests hmm. but those side quests are not interesting enough on their own to. uh like provide the motivation to do all of them so it's like okay i want to do the main quest but i don't want to miss out on the side quests but then the side quests are you know like to uh, but the side quests are boring so uh, i'll just play something else that, that <laughs> that's my thought process mm-hmm. okay fair enough uh, some of those side quests are pretty hard also you end up dying a lot yeah yeah another yeah this reminds me actually i got lost in the forest which it's not <laughs> that big but it's just so confusingly designed there's like bushes everywhere and like there's supposed to be a path here but i i follow that and then suddenly i am in some of the there's places there's a dead end yeah we're talking about visor 2 here right yeah, yeah the visual. first open world hub where i think that monster blocks the port or something right yeah so yeah one. yeah yeah oh that one yeah yeah the forest around that city my god that's just i yeah. actually got stuck there as well but and in fact i didn't play the game afterwards because my pc wasn't willing to pill play it it was too old uh then i upgraded my machine and then when i replayed the game then i kind of understood okay this is i kind of had to memorize the path but you're true uh, you're right it's it was quite uh, confusing yeah mm. yeah yeah i think it was purposely designed to be confusing because yeah, that's not really a defense right that's no, like no it's not a defense i'm not i'm not defending it i say i i think the the what they were thinking was It's scarier if you wander off into a forest and monsters attack you and you don't know the way back. True, true. Uh, 
and but yeah, yeah for players for players who are just coming into the game it can be really frustrating to get lost in a place when you just started you know this new oh, yeah yeah act sensibly yeah yeah because at that point you are not invested in the enough in the plot you're not mm. far enough in the, in the plot to think ki oh my god i've already invested 30 hours of this these characters are half way in uh, you know yeah. so yeah so at that point you don't have the necessary investment yeah you're not pulled into the world enough to to think oh this is cool i'm lost where the hell am i uh, you're thinking what the hell is going on why am i lost i'm i died in that first thing where do i go many times yeah. anyway what the hell yeah. yeah where am i where is this game going fair enough but once you do cross that level it's kind of fun i mean i enjoyed witcher it really did immerse me the second me. act of that game yeah. is phenomenal uh, oh, yeah. just because of the two paths that you take that completely change what happens yeah uh, like you you can be playing the second act of that game in completely different areas true uh, yep and that's another thing actually uh um uh, I, i was no actually i was thinking of something else like uh, since we haven't actually uh, ragged on thief in this week's po- podcast <laughs> so we should probably discuss that the original thief trilogy had excellent world building and or i think it's kind of just, the gold standard i think for world building yes uh, for me it will always be grand theft auto uh, but uh, i think yeah thief is pretty great at it too i think gta is sort of like cheating because they, they it's kind of like a, a parody of the modern world so a lot of the, the stuff like you know modern world has already done it for them or but so, i like <laughs> i have never had a moment of you know just jaw dropping awe until i the first grand i played grand theft auto 3 and when i got yeah, into a car GTA, like yeah. i could just go anywhere you know uh mm. <clears throat> i've not had that kind of oh my god this is insane this is amazing but uh, yeah like i think the thief games do a great job again sound plays such a key part in scaring yeah. the shit out of the player in thief you know like you, you're yeah. always listening for what's going over what's happening around you yeah it's uh, it's it's surprising because no other game has done sound design so well and that game was like in 1998 you know so. yeah yeah it it like even in the, the the new thief game which i started playing the when you walk on different materials it does do the different sound but it doesn't sound nearly as ominous as it, as it did in the old thief games when yeah. you were stepping on metal and when you were moving a little too fast you knew you were making a mistake yeah there's no feeling of that the new game yeah. uh and on top of that uh, like since this was kind of world building esque so yeah it establishes garrett pretty effectively yeah. Yeah. and and and, and even and, even establishes the city really well the city yeah. is a character on its own in those games uh, yeah mm-hmm. and and like i think i don't know the other cool thing that it does i find is that in between missions you're always buying stuff so you always get the feeling that garrett is living hand to mouth you know everything yeah. he earns in the old missions is being spent on equipment for the new mission yeah yeah he doesn't have this large sum of money that he's just sitting on somewhere you know like stealing money has a has a meaning you're stealing money for a reason yeah and i think exactly. that's clear yeah it kind of ties in uh, it gives your character uh, the player's motivation that is to just steal every shiny thing that they find yeah. and it ties into the character motivation so that's a great a uh, hallmark of design when your player character motivations and the player then the motivations align so perfectly yeah mm-hmm. uh, like it it makes sense that there's so much stuff lying around in the world that you can just pick up and steal on the on the funny end though because of the amount of stuff that you're picking up like it all it's almost comical it's because it's been like this guy has this huge cloth sack hanging over his shoulder while running out of the building uh, <laughs> yeah yeah No, I think I was saying that it also makes sense that you can only spend money in between chapters because you steal all amounts of random objects. So you yeah. will, you probably invent a justification saying, okay, Garrett was probably at a pawn shop or something. So he first selling all this stuff, stuff that he stole yeah. in exchange then, for items. Yeah. So it kind of ties it into that, even though like it's not really what's it's happening. It's not explicit. Yeah, it's not explicit yeah. about. Yeah, but you can easily invent a justification in your head that okay, this is yeah. why it's happening, and of course, like you know, like since like another of a kind kind of similar game, Deus Ex, also does this well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Deus Ex does it well. I I don't think we need to discuss Deus Ex though. Everybody <laughs> in the universe knows why why it does those things well. Uh, 
Now, do you want to discuss what Deus Ex: Human Revolution did right and wrong, though? Because like that's it. That's sure. A, yeah, that's, a, that's actually a, a pretty good discussion to have. Let's yeah. not discuss boss fights, though. But <laughs> <laughs> other than that, everything is on the table. Yeah, the boss fights are the in Deus Ex: HR are the version of you know people asking why don't uh, villains just shoot Batman in the chin? It's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, <come. laughs> so, so Rashi, do you want to start like to tell us what you like I, about? I I actually stuff? haven't I haven't played that game. <laughs> I <laughs> haven't played most of the games you guys are mentioning, and I'm ashamed. <laughs> no, it's not, there is not really any like you know. Well, there's no need to be ashamed for having a life. <laughs> I don't have a life. That's why I'm ashamed. <laughs> I've been spending too much time on life already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Deus Ex: Human Revolution, like, uh, if you w- want to approach it from the game's angle, the game itself is a sequel to possibly the greatest game ever made. I'm just going to say it. Like, well, it's a se- it's a sequel in that series, sure. I yeah. guess. Yeah. So, and at that point, you are supposed to follow around ten years of like all these awesome mods and all of the anticipation and the yeah. and they somehow still manage to not feel a disappointment that and even make have a good game so just not yeah. feeling a disappointment is a great achievement in itself but then sort of feeling like a great game on top of that is like even more and that is yeah they did a great job with that game uh, yeah. like i think, so the, I think the, they they did not do sort of cheating in that they made it a prequel so they didn't have to follow up the events of deus ex but that would have been insane there's no yeah, way you could follow up the events yeah, there's of too much variables yeah there's too many yeah like like you said there's too many variables and i think uh, w- like the one thing they do that's really smart is that they make huge levels which allows them to give you a large space to move around in they do the same thing the first deus ex game did they give you yeah. these huge hubs which give the player gives the player large areas to explore and you know do stuff in yeah and at the same time in these huge levels there are these small spaces that you have to navigate inside you know they yeah. they set they set that up really well so like it feels like a believable city that you're in when you're in detroit for example yeah uh, you can go inside buildings that that's really cool yeah uh, and i think in terms of uh, i'm trying to remember the exact opening i think you start off in the serif in serif industries office right yeah 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 there's a attack yeah. that's where it starts yeah and i think yeah it, at that point it stumbles a bit because i remember if you don't do certain conversations you kind of miss the i i don't know like there's this there's this one minor problem that happens like if you spend too much time exploring then the people die yeah the hostage is die if you spend too much time uh, talking to people around the office so that's kind of weird because you first yeah. your first reaction is oh my god such a big level yes it's dsx get <laughs> back everyone you know so but yeah once you actually get back and you can explore yeah that's when the game hits its its stride the first yeah. mission is kind of uh a weirdish especially the point where sarif asks you if he should give you this gun or that so like you are in a helicopter buddy you're not going to pop off to a shop why not just give me both weapons right but i don't know i think that was them basically referencing the beginning of day sex uh um gap gun sniper rifle crossbow oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, but yeah, that's not really like, but yeah, okay, I can give them that, but still, like. That being <laughs> said, Sarif is nowhere near as cool a character as JC's brother. He says just slightly like, less awesome than each of them. Plus, I think one of the other things is that like, they've kind of become mimetic, the original Deus Ex characters. Yeah, so, yeah, they, so you can't really like follow. Everyone in that game is pretty legendary at this point, you know. Yeah. Uh, Like they do some cool things in Deus Ex: Human Revolution story. Tracer Tong's father shows up uh, in the ending of the game. That that uh, dude, uh, I forget his name, the asshole in the opening cutscene of Deus Ex shows up. Uh, <laughs> Which one? Yeah, like the one that's like like uh, the Unarco Savage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Another. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, like Rashi, if if you were to um, like because you should probably play these games at some point. You should probably start off at Human Revolution because it's way more yeah. easier to get into. Then okay. you get into Original Deus Ex. And then you should wait for a little while because I'm fairly certain that a, an HD version of Deus Ex is coming. 
actually i already have human I revolution so someone gave it to me so okay yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. i just I have to download it i thought dsx was already hd like what's no no i'm HD talking about like a new version with new models and everything oh oh right yes the old sure. days yeah i'm pretty sure square enix is going to like screw up the the franchise with their cross media experience dsx thingy just be yeah. happy that the dsx characters <laughs> haven't shown up wait so yeah. we'll see a more handsome jensen <laughs> like i yeah like i don't know like yeah i'm not really sure yeah i don't know what they're going to do with that franchise now uh it's gone on, it went on the ios uh, yeah yeah dsx the fall like the one thing that like, nobody asked for and it's coming on pc now uh yeah. hopefully it's good like new thief for the first couple of hours that i played have been good so i don't know i like it the internet does not <laughs> yeah yeah because especially like thief and dsx these are uh very controversial franchises they're yeah. like, not really controversial more like controversial. there are very certain loved. expectations yeah yeah they're, they're very, very loved and like if you touch those like if you touch thief especially Yeah. Uh, you know, it it becomes like why you why you go. It's like uh, people the way people felt when Peter Jackson decided to remake the Lord of the Rings, right? There were a lot of people who were intensely pissed off. Why are you touching like Tolkien's greatest book, <laughs> movie shit? Yeah. And yeah. then when the movies came out and everybody was happy. Out here, Thief game came out and everybody's pissed off apparently. Yeah. You need certain like a certain amount of skill, and you know like. Yeah, and I think the main problem uh, which it doesn't make these games uh, replicable is the huge amounts of money you need to make levels nowadays. Like, what? Yeah, hmm. it's just it's insane. Yeah, you need an insane number of artists and uh, like designers working in tandem to produce a level of that size with the kind of assets and detail that you require in those in those levels. It's, it's yeah. not. I mean, done. if you look at so, the original Deus Ex levels, objectively they are pretty ugly, right? and yeah and i read lots of dev diaries and such and they say that uh, like one of the designers was like i would used to make levels in lunch time and they would be there in the final and in the final game just like that so at that point of time levels were just like small rectangles with some texture yeah. in them and some sort it of, doesn't take a lot of time to produce yeah. those levels because you look at the number of assets in them as well there are not that many yeah. assets in dsx levels right Yeah. and all the assets that are there are things you can pick up and throw around so they built that stuff very very quickly you can't do that anymore you like yeah. the assets I in am. those games people take hours modeling and texturing them yeah. i actually think you mm. can if you use the something like unity asset store to like just get you know like like what we brian fargo and like in exile are doing with basically yeah but brian fargo and in exile can do that If the Assassin's Creed guys did that, it would be a whole other thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. The, the, there are a lot of legal implications to to, to yeah. using stuff like that in your game. That being said, let's get back to the main topic. We drifted very far from what we were doing. <laughs> like, is there anything else that you guys want to talk about? It you is. know, you you mentioned that Thief. A lot of people are not very happy with Thief, and you know there were certain expectations. Maybe that's why Valve hasn't released Half Life Three. <laughs> They're uh-huh. just afraid yeah. of people's expect. uh which sucks because valve i mean if anyone makes worlds they can pull you into it's valve uh, look at portal and portal 2 look at the half life series the half life series was pretty good i mean i've played a bit of 2 portal was amazing no doubt yeah. i recommend it to everybody be it doesn't matter if they're gamers or non gamers i just tell them to play it yeah portal 1 yeah. definitely i'd say portal 1 is the best valve game i would say because it's it's it doesn't stretch itself for too long and from start to finish it's just perfect like it's perfectly pay paced like the puzzles are introduced at a nice pace never feels boring i mean i cannot find any flaws in that like you know i think it's my just, favorite val game is left for dead man <laughs> oh yes i haven't, I haven't played left for, for dead so that's their game which i played the most i've put the most number of hours into left for dead uh, same here Like I think a lot of games picked up a cue from yeah. uh, the Last of Us has this as a similar thing, right? Like stuff yeah. written on walls and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last of Us is another good game yeah. in terms. Oh, of then, yeah. Uh, I, I was actually thinking about this while you were discussing about Left 4 Dead. <laughs> 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 no, but Last of Us was pretty good that way. 
So, uh, Rashi, like in terms of world building, what, what do you like about The Last of Us? You know, what do you like that they did in terms of pulling you into that world? Um, I like the I liked how they started the whole uh, zombie outbreak thing, how they established it, and I like the way they build the characters and the, they build the relationship between those two, uh, Ellie, Joel and Ellie. That was pretty good. Each level when it starts, there's a really good setup for where they are and why they're yeah. there. Yeah. You know, the beginning is the world is normal and nobody knows what's going on, and True. then everything goes goes nuts. Everything oh, goes first. goes to hell. The characters in that game. With the exception of Ellie, no one is a likable character. Yeah. They're all really horrible people. True. Like, Joel is a, is a horrible person. <laughs> like, the, yeah. because the things you see him but, do... But then the there, is, see, there is probably but, reasons for that, right? I mean, Joel, the way he acts is because of a particular reason. Then uh, that Firefly Queen, she's acting that way because of a particular reason. Maybe in her past. Well, she, or... she comes across as the most... Uh, selfless person in the whole thing right she comes mm-hmm. across as the person who's willing to make sacrifices willing to let her friends die because yeah. there's a reason for it at the end of it it's saving everyone right joel comes across as the kind of guy who doesn't care if the world burns so long as what he cares about remains intact right by the end of the game he's become a really like he's like you think that the game is heading towards him getting some side some kind of redemption and being able to let go but he becomes even worse by the end of the game. <laughs> but then, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, think about it. If you were in his place, would you have done the same thing as, you know, would you have done the same thing? She says she wants to die, right? But still, I mean, you she she's the only thing that you care about. And I don't know. I mean. Yeah, but her choice is to die. And like her dying saves that the human species it, it wasn't it wasn't uh, sure they weren't sure whether she would save them so no they they're, sh- they're pretty sure right by the end like they know that what is what is special about her is in her brain that's why they need to kill her if it's inside her blood all they need to do is just take a, like a little bit of blood there's no need to travel this far right okay okay i thought it was uh, they were unsure about it. they were not no, sure no, no, it. they're not unsure about it they know what is special about her Okay. Like the virus attacks the brain. Her brain has, has remained intact in spite of the fact that the virus is at. Uh, sorry, Arvind, spoilers for Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, no problem, really. <laughs> He's not going to play it. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely watching a Let's Play now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, I don't know. I think it's. Like, I wouldn't have. I, like, I wouldn't. I would have let her die. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's, that's what she wants, right? She wants, like, the, the game is building up towards him being able to let go of the fact that his daughter is dying. And in the end, he's not able to let go of that. Yeah. Because he's now, like, he's now kind of surviving under the delusion that Ellie's going to replace his daughter in his life. Huh. Which is, it, which is just very disturbing. Of, I mean, Nathan Drake. Because Nathan Drake is also pretty selfish. I'm like, no, but I'm not on this level. Like, Nathan Drake regularly saves the world, man. <laughs> yeah. Not like Joel. Joel, at the end of the game, Joel is basically killing a bunch of innocent people. He comes across as a really heartless bastard by the end of the game. Uh, True. Yeah. I have my favorite chapter in that game, even again in terms of world building, is Winter, when Joel is hurt and you play as Ellie. For, oh, like, yes. That was pretty amazing. I, that was pretty amazing. I mean... They did a very good job showing uh, Ellie's strength and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like they set up, Yeah, they set up that whole arc uh, really, really well. Mm. Have you played The Walking Dead? I mean, since yes. we're on the topic of zombies. Yes. Everyone has played The Walking Dead. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's pretty no, good. I haven't, yeah. I mean, yeah, compared, but... to, compared to Joel's character, uh, I forget, Lee. Yeah, his name was Lee, right? Yeah. Lee was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Lee is definitely a much better character yeah. than Joel. There's no, there's no comparison. He is willing to die for, I think, almost everyone in that group by the end yeah. of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of what's happening. Except uh, Kenny. Like, nobody likes him. I like Kenny, actually. Like, by the end of, like, I don't know, especially the way Kenny died in, in the game I was oh, playing with. Right. Was, oh, yeah. yeah. At I that was, point, I liked him. Yeah. But, but I was before that, gutted. I didn't. Kenny I was running to... out of tissues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that fifth, yeah, the fifth episode was just very heartbreaking. Yeah. 
uh, everybody dies in that one time. Like the the third, fourth, and fifth episodes are all just back to back big heaps of misery. Yeah. Uh, it starts in the third it's episode. Like the and... first two are much better. Yeah. So. No, no, it's not like the first two are much better. The se- the second has a pretty great like the second. Like, I don't know, the first is set up. The second is super stylish this is because it's a self-contained story, right? Mm-hmm. And the whole big conceit is these people are cannibals, they eat each other. Yeah. yeah. Not right? each other, like, but other people. They eat They eat other people. That's the huge reveal of the second episode, right? And the third episode is like that awful moment on the highway when she shoots one of your friends yeah. Uh, yeah. without any reason for doing so. Like, it's yeah. just... In- intensely like and after that the next episode duck dies right or does duck die in the same episode same episode i think yeah like, yeah yeah it it ends oh, at that point. oh yeah his his son right uh, kenny's son yeah. kenny's son oh died. God, and his wife horrible. kills himself oh what his wife episode, kills herself. i mean episode 5 i can say that okay it's the ending everyone obviously has to die but man fuck episode 3 that was just the <laughs> that was just the like full of sucker punches you know yeah <laughs> True. Uh, that's really bad. Yeah. I think the writing definitely is what sucks you yeah. into that one. Like, I mean, that's the best. I mean, that's the I best definitely... written character, right? Like, you can true, write true. characters that people like. Yeah. But like a, a a character people dislike yet understand why he's doing yeah. all that. He's stuff. doing that. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 I was going to say that uh, The Walking Dead was definitely one of. Uh, quite good in fact i think i would rate it higher than uh, the last of us uh, yeah, that's, in terms that's of that's not a yeah unreasonable mm. statement to say like yeah. yeah yeah same here i was actually thinking of uh, another series of games which do good world building but like the writing not so much which is you know like quantic dream david cage since we haven't Ooh. mentioned him yet yes i agree like david cage for all the other stuff that i don't like him for he does excellent world building yeah. He writes shitty characters though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and storyline. Oh, I played I played Beyond Two Souls and I wasn't very impressed by it. It felt a lot like the sixth sense for some reason. That's because That's it's basically the sixth sense but with superpowers. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And she doesn't see dead people, she sees dead person. Hmm. One. One dead person. And the only I mean, out of all the episodes, the chapters that Beyond Two Souls has I think my favorite was that the part where she reaches Mexico. Uh, what was it called? Navajo or something. That was oh, pretty amazing. Okay. That was that was my favorite part of the entire game. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that that is like the interesting kind of spiritual journey part of the game. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. I, don't I mean, I haven't played Beyond Two Souls, but, I, but uh, like I've seen a lot of videos of Heavy Rain and I've played Endeavor Prophecy. So yeah, it's I like played the, it's prophecy, I played Heavy Rain, and yeah. uh, both those games have interesting worlds. But uh, yeah. I mean, and Indigo Prophecy, Indigo prophecy, prophecy even has interesting characters. Yeah, I, I I'd probably not go as so far as that, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, like they both of those games start out and they completely grab your attention. They're like, oh yes, Indigo Prophecy, you start out by like you know murdering yes. this guy. There's this vision, and then there's a murder mystery by from both sides. Which is really interesting. Yeah, and so, yeah. Uh, heavy rain. You start out with pressing X to Jason. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Dave, David Cage writes good, does good game words. Uh, let's yeah, end it. Like, that. Yeah, like that. That the it's more like like you visualize a scenario and that scenario is interesting, but then you don't know how to follow it up. That way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Basically, I think the conclusion of our discussion is if you want to make a game with good world building, put zombies in it. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> zombies and robot dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And zombies and robot dinosaurs. in it and get David Cage to write it. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> it's going to be the best game ever. Yeah. Alright. I, I think that's that's about it. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the episode, guys. Uh Guys, thank you for listening for the, this week. That's all we have to say about building worlds in video games. This is Rake, and with me are Arvind. Bye. And Rashi. Bye. All right. See you guys.